Hey everybody, Ryan from Rhino Hockey Channel here. Alright, going to do my preview of the second round matchup between Colorado Avalanche and Vegas Golden Knights. The dream series has happened. We're going to get this series. It's happening. I'm excited for this series. I don't know if anybody isn't. Why are you not excited? Let me know in the comments because this is going to be an exciting series. Alright. Other than that, Make sure to hit that subscribe button, hit that like button as well, and let's get started with this matchup. Alright, Colorado was 4-3-1 against Vegas this year, and Vegas was 4-4 four four against Colorado. So, a very close matchup again. Alright, first matchup was a 1-0 Vegas victory in regulation. Next one was a 3-2 Colorado victory, followed by a 3-2 Colorado victory. Followed by a 3 0 Vegas victory. Then the largest goal differential victory in this series, a 5 1 victory for the Avalanche. Next was a 3 2 overtime win for the Vegas Golden Knights. Followed by a 5 2 victory for Vegas and a 2 1 victory for Colorado. So, very close series. Both teams going 4 4. If it was a 7 game series, Vegas would have won because you cancel out that last game down there. But that's how close this series is going to be. It's going to be very close. Alright, as you can tell, there was not some of the heavy scoring you've seen in some of the other matchups. This one, for Colorado, Nathan McKinnon was the top scorer. Not a shocker there. Six points, though. Two goals and four assists. And three of those points came in one game. So he had three points in the other seven games in this series. I have a feeling it's going to be a low scoring series. Devin Tate or Devon Tate's three goals, two assists, five points. Rotten in four points. Don Scoy, four points. Gerard and Confer all had both had three points. Phil Grubauer was four, two, and one in this series. Max Pacioretty was the top scorer for the entire series and Vegas. He had eight points, six goals, two assists. I guess it's a good thing he came back when he did. Mark Stone, six points. Uh, I, I keep wanting to say a former San Jose Shark, Malcolm Carlson's name. William Carlson is his name. Five points. Tuck, Marcheseau, Petrangelo, and Martinez all had four points each. And Mark andre Fleury was four and three. So looking at the top scorers on these teams, Vegas scorers had an advantage. But if you'd seen the whole list, which you cannot, but... Uh, Vegas had less guys scoring points. They had more of the same people scoring points. Where Colorado had a longer list of guys getting points. So Colorado was able to spread out more than Vegas was in the scoring in this series. Or in this matchup head to head this season. Alright. Once again top scores. If you want to check these out. Please hit that pause button now. And check out my previous videos about these two in their first round series. For a more in depth view of them playoff scoring wise Nathan McKinnon is your top scorer for Colorado with 9 points, 6 goals, 3 assists had a great first round considering it was 4 games Gabriel Landeskog had a great first round too, 8 points, 2 goals, 6 assists Miko Rotnin also a great first round, 7 points Ryan Graves 4 points in that first round series Saad, Donskoy and Makar all had 3 points in that first round series and my dark horse pick for Vegas in the first round series, Matias Yanmark had six points for them, including a hat trick in that final game seven. That was a good dark horse pick on my part, I think. But he had a great first round, he really did. And he was effective defensively too, so great first round for Yanmark. Mark Stone, five points. Tuck, five points. Chandler Stevens at five points, and three others were tied for with four points. And as, as I said before, with the top scorers from the regular season, the goalie stats for regular season, if you want to check these out closer, hit that pause button now. Check out the previous videos to find out what I thought about these goalies in the regular season. All right, playoff-wise, Grubauer is 4-0, obviously the top goalie. Because it was the only sweep. 1.75 goals against. And a 9.36 save percentage. 
Mark Andre Fleury was four and three, one point seven one goals against average and nine thirty one save percentage. So you just because he played seven games versus four for Grubauer in the first round, doesn't mean that Grubauer was better in that first round series. Fleury was amazing in that first round series. Minnesota was just able to shut down their offense for a few games. All right, injury wise, Colorado's looking at a lot more injuries. Logan O'Connor is still out indefinitely with lower body injury. Matt Calvert still week to week with undisclosed injury. Eric Johnson's out indefinitely with an upper body injury still. From what I understand, he's been around the team more. Maybe that's more of a morale thing, but he's been around the team more. So we'll see. Pavel Van, uh, Frankus is that still out for his season with lower body injury. Jason Megna is day to day. He tested positive for COVID. So. He may be out for a little bit. Oh, no. He tested positive, then tested negative the next day. But he's still on the COVID-19 list for some reason. Uh, Nazim Kadri has still got six games in his suspension. It is being appealed, so he may be showing up earlier in this series. Honestly, they're going to need him in this series. So, him being out for six games, that could be devastating. But having him back for Game 7, if there is a Game 7 would be a big boost but i think he's gonna be back earlier than that because usually when you appeal suspensions they used usually get shortened at least a game or two if not more so we'll see all right for vegas their injuries Braden mcnab is day-to-day -day. he tested positive for covid so we'll see when he can come back if he can in this series Tomas Noshik is still is still day to day with undisclosed injury after taking a hard hit in this in the Minnesota series. Peyton Krebs is day to day with COVID nineteen protocol after his jaw injury, so healed up from jaw injury now on COVID nineteen protocol. Did not test positive, but through contract contact tracing, if I could talk, not contracts, no contact tracing, he was put on COVID nineteen protocol list. All right, last playoff round. St. Louis, what? St. Louis, Colorado swept St. Louis in four games and in dominating fashion in those games. Granted, St. Louis did not have a great year, so I take it with a grain of salt. And also, St. Louis's best offensive guy from the regular season, Perron, was out the entire series, I believe. Maybe played the last one, but he was out the whole series. That hurt too. For Vegas, they beat Minnesota in seven. So, and it was an exciting seven game series. It really was. All right. These two had never met in the playoffs before. Obviously, Vegas has only been in the league for, I believe, this is four years now. So, they've only played in, was it? Yeah. Seven series so far. And Colorado has not been one of them. But this one's going to be fun. All right, Dark Horse for Colorado has not changed. Yunus Donskoy, I still, with the year of San Jose made the finals, and he was a big part of them making the finals. And I think he could be a big part of it for Colorado this year. There's just something about this guy. I, I like the way this guy plays, especially in the playoffs. He's very effective. Because he plays usually like mixture of second, third line. So if he's playing third line he could be an effective third liner for them for sure especially against Vegas because Vegas's third line is not as strong as their first probably about the same as this no stronger than not as stronger than their second and for some reason their fourth is a very effective line but their third is not I don't understand it but that's how it is and Dark Horse for Vegas their top scorer in this head-to-head -head series in the matchup, Max Pacioretty, who played one game in that last seven-game series due to injury. So, he if he gets going scoring-wise in this series, it's going to be a hard series for Colorado. It's going to be. But if he's not effective at all, doesn't score at all, Vegas is going to have a hard time winning this series. Now for the predictions. I'm predicting Colorado in seven because you know what? I picked them to win the entire thing anyways. So I'm sticking with that pick. Colorado in seven. It's going to be an exciting seven game series. Even game seven is going to be exciting. God, would it be amazing to see this come down to an overtime. That would be awesome. And I wouldn't be surprised either. So there you have it. 
I, honestly, no. I, I think Colorado is going to beat them. I think Pacioretty, he looked pretty good in that game. But we'll see because that was first game back in game seven. Adrenaline gets going for that one. But I just think Colorado with their offense and Grubauer, if he keeps playing as good as he has, it's going to be hard to beat him. I mean, Flurry's going to shut him down too. Don't get me wrong. But Flurry has an ability to falter at times. And that's not taken away from him. He still won three Stanley Cups. He's still a great goalie. But if he can't stay 100% like he was in those games they won last round, if he can't do that for four games, they're done. Plain and simple. But he also may have a short leash. And Robin Leonard, we'll have to see how he does. Because I think he only played one game against Colorado this year and lost that one game. So, we'll see. But that's what I think. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, please hit that like button. Hit that subscribe button. And make sure to comment. Let me know if you have a different idea of how this series is going to go. I'd love to hear it. And make sure to share. And I will see you all next video. Bye, everybody.